Welcome back. So in this video, we're going to start our discussion of trade-offs, specifically looking at the production possibilities frontier, or also called the production poss possibilities curve, also sometimes abbreviated PPC or PPF. Now I'm sure you've all seen this in your basic economics class that you've taken, definitely in undergrad, probably in high school too. This is one of the first things they teach us in economics. And they build upon this concept of a trade-off. That's what this is designed to illustrate trade-off. Okay, now let me just talk to you a little bit about trade-offs in a very intuitive sense, okay? Imagine you've got two professors, right? One of them is teaching you accounting and one of them is teaching you entrepreneurship. That's me, teaching entrepreneurship. And you've got one hour, exactly one hour, because you were in college, you were having a great time, you are doing other things, maybe not your homework, and you've got exactly one hour to turn an assignment. You can spend that one hour on the entrepreneurship homework, you know, assuming both assignments take one hour each of your time. You can spend that one hour on your entrepreneurship assignment, or you can spend that one hour on your accounting homework. But we all know what the answer is since you're watching this channel. Of course you're not going to do your accounting homework, you're going to do the entrepreneurship homework. But the point is, if you've only got one hour, you can't do both assuming both assignments take one hour. Now, of course, you could also divide it, like do kind of a half-baked job on the entrepreneurship one and a half-baked job on the accounting homework. You can do that, right? But either way, it's a choice. Accounting or entrepreneurship, or 50-50 or some combination, because you can't possibly complete both tasks that are an hour long if you only have an hour. You can't complete them 100%. That's the essence of a trade-off in a nutshell. And the production possibilities curve is a way to visually illustrate this concept. So, let's first of all draw an X and a Y axis. Yeah. That hurt even my ears and I'm standing next to her. I'm sorry about that for my YouTube followers. And we're going to label that X and Y axis. And the classic example that you use in a production possibilities frontier is guns and butter. Why guns and butter? Because when you think about economics, their perspective is from the bird's eye view, so they're looking at like entire nations. So guns could be like military or defense spending, and butter is kind of a way of looking at like food or agricultural spending, right? So a country basically has two kinds of goods, guns for military you know, stuff, or butter. They can eat or they can fight. And what combination is that gonna look like? So what we normally do is we'll actually draw this curve. And in a simple model, we assume it's a one-to-one -one trade off for guns and butter, kind of like it takes you an hour to do accounting homework, it takes you an hour to do entrepreneurship homework, you know, and it's the same amount of time for each. So for every gun you produce, you give up one quantity of butter or one you know, tub of butter. So your curve will look kind of like this. And let's play with this a little bit, okay? Let's say that I want to produce this many guns, I'm going to call that quantity G1, then therefore I can only produce this amount of butter, B1, okay? So I'm spending a lot of money on guns and my people are hungry. Let's say that as a, as a nation, as a matter of nationwide economic policy, <clears throat> I decide that's not good enough. I want to feed my people better. So I'm going to produce now way more butter or way more food. And so that's going to be quantity B2. And quantity G2. So in this particular scenario, you see, okay, great. I am now producing way more butter. I mean, that's a lot more butter. Of course, I should have labeled these axes, you know, with a plus. A minus to indicate that. Okay, so here I'm producing way more butter, 
but you know, significantly fewer guns, and maybe that's better. But then let's say we're going to go back to war again. I need to produce a lot more guns and a lot less food. Okay, That's the production possibilities curve or the production possibilities frontier in a nutshell. Okay, Designed to illustrate trade-offs. There's no way, based on the way this curve is illustrated, that you could possibly produce both B2 and G1 simultaneously based on the constraints of this particular model. But we're going to talk about this in just a second. Okay? Uh, how these curves can be manipulated or how they can be changed. Okay? So, this has been a really simple explanation of trade-offs. If you have any questions, post them in the comments down below. As always, hit that like button. Okay? And definitely hit that subscribe button. I'm a starving YouTube creator. Hope you've enjoyed this video, and we're going to talk about operational effectiveness or operational efficiency in the next video, and we're going to relate it to this production possibilities frontier. I'll see you in the next video.